this is the uh, notes for section 6-7, <coughs> Rotation Symmetry. If you haven't done so already, uh, make sure that you uh, stop the video at this time and go back and read section 6-7 before continuing on. Uh, earlier in this chapter, we talked about figures being reflection symmetric, and we've kind of explored that idea of reflection symmetry as we looked at a lot of the different figures that we've looked at so far, including all the special quadrilaterals. Now we want to look at a second type of symmetry, which we call rotation symmetry. And uh, in rotation symmetry, uh, here's our definition. So if, if a figure is a rotation symmetric with a center of symmetry, we say a plane figure F is a rotation symmetric figure if and only if. That IFF is just shorthand for if and only if. There is a rotation R with a magnitude between 0 and 360 degrees such that the rotation of a figure F is F. Okay? So in other words, if there's any measure anywhere between 0 and 360 degrees such that when I turn the figure or rotate the figure that degree, it will land right back on top of itself. Okay? Now the center of that rotation is what we call the center of symmetry for that figure. Okay? So instead of it having a line of symmetry, it's going to have a center of symmetry. <laughs> Okay, so here's a website where we can create some different uh, symmetric figures, whether it be reflection or rotation symmetric. So if I want to, uh, if I want to create a a rotation symmetric figure, it allows me to choose whether it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. Now it can be any uh, number here, but those are the ones that this website allows me to choose. So let's explore what we mean by these numbers next. So let's go back to our notes before we actually create a rotation symmetric figure and talk about what these, these particular numbers represent. OK, we will generally refer to that number that we are looking at as the n number, or n-fold rotation symmetry. So when we talk about reflection symmetry, we talk about how many lines of reflection it has. Well, when we talk about rotation symmetry, we're basically talking about how many times can I turn it on to itself until we're back to our original position. Okay? Well, we're going to say that m is the smallest magnitude for a rotation that maps a figure onto itself. In other words, what's the smallest turn I can do to a figure such that it will sit back right on top of itself? Okay? If that's the case, to get n, the number of, of fold rotation symmetric a figure is, what we're going to do is we're going to take 360 degrees, the measure going all the way around, and dividing it by m, the magnitude of this smallest rotation. Okay? So n rotations will bring a figure back to its original position. Okay? So if that's the case, let's go back over here and let's look at creating. Let's say I want to create a, we'll go with 3 to start out with. So if I create a three-fold rotation symmetric figure, okay, by setting at, at 3 here, what I can do is I can draw anything on here and it will create those folds for me. Okay? So as I do that, I'm creating a three-fold rotation symmetric figure. So what that means is that if I rotate this figure 120 degrees, it will sit right back on top of itself. Okay? So for every 120 degree return, rotation, the figure will sit back on top of itself. Okay? Now I can also look at it with other numbers. Let's say I want to look at a six-fold rotation symmetric figure. When I draw that figure, okay, this figure, when I rotate it, uh, 360 degrees divided by 6, which is 60 degrees it will sit back on top of itself. So there's six rotations that I can make to this figure such that it will sit back on top of itself. Okay? And you'll notice that if you have it in that in that particular way, it doesn't matter what you draw, okay, 
it's going to give me a six-fold rotation symmetric figure. Okay, so all of that would represent if I if I turn it you know 60 degrees, it's going to sit back on top of itself. Okay, next I'd like to look at the uh, the relationship between reflection symmetric figures and rotation symmetric figures. So if, if a figure possesses two lines of symmetry, so in other words, if it, if it has reflection symmetry and there are two lines of reflection symmetry, their point where they intersect, that point P, would be the center for rotation symmetric. Uh, so, so, so in other words, if it is reflection symmetric and there are are two lines of symmetry that intersect, or at least two lines of symmetry that intersect, then we say it's also rotation symmetric, and the center of that rotation would be that point P where the two lines, two or more lines, intersect. Okay? So whenever a figure has intersecting symmetry lines, it has rotation symmetry as well. <laughs>